It's Monday, the 31st of October 2016. It's Halloween today. Yes, uh, it's Halloween today. Have you noticed the little Halloween item I have with me today? Hey, look at this. Now this is very, very heavy. Oh, really heavy. This was a gift to me years ago from an ex of mine uh, when we went to Disney. Look, it's got a little wind-up thing. Just a minute. Can you hear it? <laughs> and they're good. And they've got witches and all evil type things on there. There they are, look. There's, where's my favourite one? Where is she? There she is. Maleficent. There she is. And uh, the uh, evil one in the globe. And an evil one on top. There are lots of evilness for you, boys and girls, in today's show. Yes. <clears throat> now, as I say, that came from Euro Disney. That is about 15 years old. Someone told me that's worth quite a bit of money now. I don't know. But I know it is, it's very, very heavy to hold that thing. Have you got your um, place done up in Halloween-type things? Have you got sweeties or, or hot buckets? Or buckets of hot boiling oil re balanced on top of your door. So when evil people come and ask at the door, trick or treat, you push a button and the hot boiling oil pours onto them from above. Have you got anything like that? Or have you just got a basket full of small sweets and things like that? Oh, you've got to have them, dear. <coughs> Otherwise, a little gets ch chucking eggs at your door. Eggs, eggs, eggs everywhere, dear. Go and get some sweets. You never know. Little ones might knock at your door tonight for sweeties. Yes. Make sure you've got some in there. Don't start giving them apples and oranges. They don't... Oh, oh but sweets are bad for them. Just give them the sweets, dear. <clears throat> they won't look very favourably at you if you start giving them oranges and bananas, dear. No, they need sweets. Sweets. <clears throat> That's what it is. <clears throat> are you decorated? To do the lights and all that sort of thing. Uh, down at Central Station, where I was on Friday, I'm there tonight for the karaoke as well. Uh, they've done it out really well. Uh, apparently two of the staff went in at six o'clock on Friday morning and started putting all this stuff up. Absolutely wonderful. Happy, ha happy Halloween. <laughs> yes. As you see, I won't need a mask. Uh, you know, I was talking yesterday on yesterday's little extra show. We need, we don't, what I'm going to do now, I've decided, if in future I can't come up here into the studio, which happens sometimes, I will try and do a little extra show. That's without all the music at the beginning, all the music at the end. Oh, talking about the music at the end, I've noticed it seems to be cutting in a bit too early. Have you noticed that? So when I'm saying goodbye over the last five or six words, the music cuts in and you can't hear me. And who am I to to uh, to take away words for you? Probably waiting desperately, wondering what I've said. And all you see is like that. And there's no music coming up. And there's music too loud coming over the top. So we'll try and fix that now. I think I'm bringing it in too early. Although I'm not quite sure how that's happening. I wouldn't like you to be disturbed. Not disturbed. Oh, it's that word again. I can never think of that word. <clears throat> um, I don't want you to suffer through lack of words. Yes. No suffering through lack of words. Uh, in, but in yesterday's little mini show, which ended up 30 minutes long, but never mind. Uh, in yesterday's little mini show, I did say that we had sniffer dogs. There were sniffer dogs in the pub I was working in on Saturday night. <coughs> they were. I didn't see the point of them, actually, because they, they were there before there were any customers. I'm sure. <laughs> Surely you would think they'd come in when there were customers in there and have a good sniff around. There's only one dog good sniff around and it did remind me uh, of a long long time ago boys and girls about about 15 years ago uh, when uh, these sniffer dogs came in and I was sitting in a pub with an ex and uh, he said oh there's a sniffer dog over there and it came around and sniffed them and the dog died you know so do be careful if you bring those exes that you don't really like anymore into pubs with you because they it may be killing police dogs 
do be very, very careful of that. All right, boys and girls? <laughs> I've had a little bit of a disaster this morning. Oh, dear. So I've had my breakfast. I've had my porridge and all that. I've put the uh, hard disk. I've got a hard, free, free sat hard disk recorder. Now, what make is it? Hum humans. Humanix. Oh, God, humans is on there as well, isn't it? Oh, I recorded humans last night. That's going to be on there. Anyway, so I put it on and it said no recordings are available. And this, this happens sometimes. I thought, oh, here we go again. So what I have to do <coughs> is simply unplug it from the wall, wait a few minutes, plug it in and it starts working. So I did this as usual. And now it won't work at all. It comes on, but there's no picture. And I have a feeling it's died. And I've got so many recordings on there waiting to be watched that the hard drive thing is about 40% 40, 40 full at the moment. Humans is on there. Half of Casualty. Loads of stuff. Eurovision Song Contests from the last two years are still on there waiting to be watched. And I haven't had time to watch them yet. And I have a feeling it's died. I'm so disappointed. I will let you know tomorrow. I'll, I've, I've unplugged it now. So by the time I go back downstairs again, uh, it will have been unplugged for the entire hour. And I'll plug it in again and, and fingers crossed it will start working. But at the moment, it looks like it's not going to work. Very disappointing. Now, television news, talking of television news, see how I'm linking professionally from one story to another, boys and girls. Uh, hot TV, it's a knockout, is to return. Do you remember it's a knockout? Yes. Uh, well, <coughs> it's a knockout, is return with a wacky test. Drag queens are coming to ensure its return to TV is a big hit. Now, I don't know. I mean, what difference is that going to make? I would like to have seen just the normal people um, like, like they used to have years ago. We can reveal the show will be back on screens after being commissioned by Channel 5 Colour. Yes, it's a knockout aired for 17 series uh, on the BBC between 1966 and 1988. We used to love it. We used to love It's a Knockout, the little tune at the beginning. And, of course, the foreign version, Jays en Frontière. I don't know whose idea it was, actually. Where, where was It's a Knockout, a British thing that then became European with other countries joining it? I don't know how that worked. Television bosses are confident it will be even more popular with viewers this time around. A telly insider says, <clears throat> there's a real appetite for fun TV. Yes, we like fun TV. What we don't like is 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 uh, TV with stupid people on it. Like The Only Way is Essex. Like Made in Ch Thick, stupid people. X Factor. We don't like telly. And I'm not talking about the contestants. The judges. Dreadful people, dear. Dreadful. Uh, Ninja Warrior UK. Oh, it's not for me, dear. They all running around in that tight light, like, don't they? Even fat people like myself are running around in. Why do the cyclists do that? <clears throat> Why is it I see cyclists on bikes with fat round their waist, exactly the same as me, dressed in tight lycra? Like, it doesn't look good. Please stop doing it, dear. Dreadful. Dreadful. Anyway, Ninja Warrior UK has been a massive ratings hit and family friendly shows like Bake Off and Saturday Night Takeaway. Actually, I quite like those two. Ant and Deck on Saturday Night Takeaway are doing better than TV shows like X Factor. Yeah, because it's not fixed. Or at least it doesn't look like it. <clears throat> the X Factor actually looks fixed. If it isn't fixed, then I'm, you know, great pity. If it is, well, you need to make it a bit less obvious. We know that when we see those faces of the judges, we know that those shots are taken after, after the show has been made and edited in. It's, it's just so badly done now. The story goes on. It feels like the nation wants to see fun shows on the box. That's what this is, a fun show. Fun, 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 fun. Oh. Halloween. Fun, fun, oh. Halloween. Yes, fun. It feels like the nation wants to see fun shows on the box, and It's a Knockout is just that. Show chip. This is in the Daily Mail, by the way. Uh, Daily Star. This is in the Daily Star. I'm reading a story from the Daily Star. I mean, it's, this show has gone right downhill today, hasn't it? Reading a story from the Daily Star. Where's it all going to end? We'll be picking up the morning advertiser next, dear. Or that 
dreadful paper, The Guardian or The Mirror. Lefty papers, dear. We'll be picking up those next. God sake, the star. Do you want me to show you the topless picture as well? No, not on this program, thank you. This is not a porn program. Not a porn program. <clears throat> Our insider says the producers think getting drag queens involved will bring the show bang up to date and help attract a younger audience. Well, I don't know how, how, how they think that. I mean, it's a great idea, drag queen. What, the whole series, though, surely not the whole series. I can understand them doing one here and one there, but there we are. Maybe I, perhaps I should be a drag queen. I should be a drag queen and enter It's a Knocker. I mean, I could do all those things, running around like my big boots muscles. Jumping up and down little ropes and things like that. Following farmers along their poles. Uh, it says they've already started hiring and there's some real talent in the bag already. So I'm looking forward to that. Very much looking forward to that, aren't you? It's a lockout. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Anyway, that's one story there. Now, I've got lots to tell you today, actually. Look at this little cutie story here. Cutie story. Oh, have you ever seen a hamster in a jumper? Look, 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 you want this in your bed with you, don't you? Eh? You want to cuddle this hamster? Look at the little jumper. My mum, actually, she used to, and she's not the only one, of course. Uh, my mum used to make hats, little wood, woolen hats. And the, she, I think she used to sell, send them to some nuns in India. Or, I think it was India, where they actually dump babies. They dump unwanted babies. Anyway, these Catholic nuns used to... Oh, I don't know if they, grew, if they were Catholic, because there's different types of nuns, isn't there? Um, let's just say nuns. Uh, these nuns would go around collecting these babies and taking them into a... Uh, what, would you, what do you call it? A, a child... Um, a baby... Oh, a baby house, I suppose. A baby house. And uh, look after them until they grew up. Um, um, we, uh, people used to make little woolen hats to put on the babies. They were ever so small they were. Uh, when my mother died, that was in 2000, um, <clears throat> I found some of these little hats and uh, I sent them to the nun. Uh, I, I think, where did I take them? I think I took them down to the church in Roehampton and gave them to one of the nuns there. Uh, a lovely thing to do. Anyway, you can get little jumpers for hamsters now. Look. There we are. A tiny hairless hamster in the U.S. state of Oregon will keep warm this winter after getting a custom made sweater. I don't see the word Ralph Lauren on there or Ted Baker, but never mind. A staff member of the Oregon Humane Society in Portland, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, where she's being cared for, knitted the sweater to help the one year old Silky stay warm. warm. Oh, is that his name? Silky. She does not be, need to be kept in a heated environment, especially in winter. She, sorry, she does. I'm, I'm jumping in a sentence here. The hamster was born hairless due to a genetic mutation. I've got a genetic mutation. It means I can't keep my mouth shut for more than two seconds at a time. Except for short curly whiskers on a little snout. I don't, you can't actually see the short curly. Oh, yeah, you can on this one. There's another picture of it there. Look. Oh, is it the same one? How can you tell, dear? They all look the same to me. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that a racist comment? Is that racist against Mike's my, uh, hamsters? They all look the same. I hope it's not offended. I haven't offended the mouse, have I? Ha <laughs> uh, ha. She does need, <clears throat> need to be kept in a heated environment, especially in winter. While she isn't fluffy like a normal hamster, we like, fl we like fluffy, don't we? We like fluffy, don't we? You like Fluffy. While she isn't fluffy like a normal hamster, she is just as cuddly and playful as the other hamsters. Oh, look, one more little look at the little hamster. Oh, bless it. She wears the sweater for special occasions, the society said. And uh, uh, and that's it. And she will soon be available for adoption. Well, when was this date? I bet she's been adopted already. 22nd of October, that one. Oh, little hamster. Oh, is it nine o'clock already? Oh, Oh, I haven't done my clock yet. It's not 10 o'clock yet. It's 9 o'clock. That's the only clock I haven't done. Oh, no, there's one in the kitchen. There's a couple of clocks. So I still haven't put them back an hour yet. Did you enjoy your extra hour of sleep? Did you? Huh? You did, didn't you? Me too. <laughs> shh, 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 for an extra hour on my, on my, on my new Raylon bed with feather mattress topper. Very, very comfortable. Now, uh, what's this here? We've done that one. I think I had another one here. Oh, I've, I've got to read you this. 
I've got to read you this. Now, we shouldn't really laugh at this. <clears throat> you know... Oh, hang on, that's not come up. Oh, there it is. That's, that's not come up. Now, you know I've got a little bit of a constipation problem, which has been going on since November. Hey, well, it carries on. It carries on. <coughs> I'm... Uh... <coughs> <coughs> I have to have special powder called Movie Kong. Move, movie Coal, I think it is. And it's supposed to help you go. Now, it's not been working too well on me. Uh, you know, <laughs> and I'm still, still kind of, you know, bits and pieces, but nothing to write home about. So I was going to make a, an appointment with the doctor again today. But I think what I'm going to do is I've, I've just run out of the stuff uh, last night, actually. So I'm going to go to the doctor, uh, to the uh, chemist today to get my new prescription. Another eight pound odd, odd money. <clears throat> and I'm going to increase it to eight a day. Yesterday I did five and it was there was a little I think I did I did do a four or five yesterday and it was a little bit of success. Now, it says on the packet you can do up to eight, up to eight and to continue that for three days. So I'm going to try that for the next three days and if still no success make another appointment at the doctor anyway so you look at things on the internet don't you and i came across this story okay i've got to read this and you shouldn't laugh you shouldn't laugh are you ready here we go so this is from someone who will remain nameless he's about six years old um posted about uh, now you if you're eating you may not wish to continue watching this program okay there are birthdays still to do at the end of it. They will be coming up. But first of all, let me read this from a said person on the internet, on uh, a, a mumsnet.com site, OK? Posted about my ongoing constipation on here recently and was very glad to be put on movie cold. Now, this is the same stuff I'm on uh, by my GP. However, she gave me slightly bad advice, I think, and led me to believe that if the dose was right... I'd be gaining, I'd be daily moving my bowels. The, I'd be gaily, but I don't think she's gay, is she? Oh, no, that's, that's, sorry, it's not different term, different terminology. She'd be gaily moving my bowels, not she, not she. I'd, I, as in the person taking the movie call, I'd be moving my bowels the very next day. If not, to up the dose. <clears throat> I upped the dose for three days as it wasn't working, eventually taking four sachets in one go. Why, about an hour after this, the first couple of doses must have kicked in and I had a lovely soft BM. Now, a BM is a bowel movement, OK? And then my world exploded. <laughs> Two days of diarrhoea, constant dashing to the toilet and sleeping in two pairs of pyjama bottoms in case I had an accident. Also, awful tummy pain and bloating. My tummy was almost rigid. I managed to take a day off and kept up the fluid, so wasn't too worried. Oh, and it goes on. Isn't it awful? So you've got to be careful. You, just, you don't know how much to take, you see. <clears throat> you know, you don't know how much to take. I'm, I, I was up to five. I think I did four yesterday. I'm going to have to go up to eight because there's still nothing happening, not really, to write home about. I mean, I haven't been this morning ago. Has anyone else got this problem? There seems to be actually quite a few people when I'm telling this story, like, in private. I don't leave a, lead a very private life, as you well know. We like to share things. But it was that bit that got me when she said, <clears throat> an hour afterwards, uh, it must have kicked in and I had a lovely soft bowel movement. But then my world exploded. <laughs> Like, it's not funny when that happens. I've had that in the car. It's not funny at all. You're in the car. Oh, my God, I need to go. And you need to go now, don't you? Oh, it's just awful. You've got to pull over and find a pub and dash in there, possibly parking on double yellow, li double red lines at the same time. <clears throat> You dash into the pub, you know, hopefully that single toilet in there will be open and there'll be no one in it. Plus, hopefully, there be never, ever, let me, here's a, here's a word of advice for you. Never, ever, ever go into a public toilet of any sort without taking a load of toilet paper in your pocket first. Believe me. Now, I, I'm lucky it's never happened to me because I've, I've always taken in a little bit of paper. But for God's sake, don't do it. Make sure you've got some tissues always in the car. Maybe a bucket as well. <laughs>
you don't. You can chuck the whole bucket. You can get a bucket for pounds now, can't you? You need s several buckets sitting in the back of your car for those unwanted incidents. That's what <laughs> Terrible, terrible. Uh, hello to Simon Keane, who writes on the Saturday show. It's uh, when your ears are itching, when someone talks about you, Mr. Chop Chop. If your nose is itching, it probably means you've got a false black widow spider in there. Oh, no. <clears throat> we don't like spiders. Don't like spiders. It's birthday time, boys and girls. Now, we've got a large selection of birthdays today. Some who I recognise, some who I don't. Uh, happy birthday today to... Audrey Gray. Happy birthday, Audrey Gray. Uh, Dawn Breaks. Now, is that a little, little nice little costume you've got on there, Dawn? Very nice indeed. Happy Dawn Breaks. Morning has broken like the first more. Happy birthday, Dawn. Uh, Logan Lucky. It's his birthday today. Little Jack James. Where have you been, Jack? You used to work with me, didn't you? In, uh, in Clapham there. Happy birthday, Jack. <clears throat> Happy birthday today to Chris Del Crystal Vars. Crystal Vars, that, that's a good name. Crystal Vars, happy birthday. Alessandro Opuration. I hope I've got that right. Alessandro Opuration. Opuratory. Opuratory. Is that how you say it? Happy birthday. All right. Dave Murray. It's Dave Murray. Happy birthday to Dave. Uh, Shelley Constantine. It's her birthday today. That's a nice name, Shelley. I like that name, Shelley. Happy birthday. Dame Barbara Monsoon. We've got some names today, haven't we? Happy birthday, Dame Barbara Monsoon. And Callum, our little Callum, who I used to work with in Ealing. Callum Hussein. 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 Is that correct? Hussein. Happy birthday to Callum Hussein. I hope you're doing very well, Callum. I often think of people that I used to work with and what they're doing now. So happy birthday. Here comes the song. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. All right, that's all today, boys and girls. Uh, tonight, it's Monday night, so I'll be hosting, ca uh, not cabaret, I'll be hosting karaoke tonight. Oh, and we've got a, a Halloween costume competition tonight as well, boys and girls. And a raffle. There's a rat. What, what's the prize? Is it not a tin of spam or something like that? I hope we've got a decent prize tonight. There's a raffle as well tonight. Uh, so I'll be hosting karaoke tonight with a raffle. That's every, not, not the raffles, not every week. OK, so every Monday night we do karaoke and cheap drinks. That is at Central Station Bar. Starts at eight o'clock. And finishes at 11.30. Nice early finish on a Monday, OK? So once again, karaoke tonight with cheap drinks each and every Monday night between 8 and 11.30pm. Uh, and there's a raffle as well this evening for Halloween. <laughs> so that's it today, boys and girls. Uh, nice to see some of you down at the karaoke. Sing as many songs as, uh, as we can possibly sing. And apart from that, enjoy your Halloween day, all right? Bye-bye, boys and girls, and I'll leave you with these laughs. laughs.